Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So after my trip to Liberty Island and Elise Island earlier in the day, now I'm moving on to uh, the Dumbo area again to sketch the uh, Manhattan Bridge in between the brick buildings in the evening glow. So here's my setup. I've got my gooseneck tripod attached to the table here on the sidewalk. A lot of people gathering around me as I'm sketching. All right, so first of all, I want to start with a very quick uh, layout sketch using my pencil for just one minute. So here's the perspective idea of the two brick buildings and the uh, very basic structure of the Manhattan Bridge in between. It's rising upwards towards the right and um, that um, leg of the bridge. And then the tower of the bridge, again, it's kind of leaning uh, lower towards the right. And this is very much the, uh, the amount of pencil work I need before drawing very securely with my Sailor brand Few Day Fountain Pen. Okay, so I'm going to start with the uh, general outline of the uh, brick building here on the left side. Again, you can see the rooftop is going down towards the right. There's a vanishing point in the very middle of the sketch that this line is going into. And then adding these uh, brackets hanging around the eave area of the building. Now starting with, uh, again, the outline of this brick building on the right, the rooftop is going down towards the left into a vanishing point somewhere in the middle of the sketch. Here I am sketching in one of the busiest areas of New York. And this alley is so popular because a lot of people um, know that it has an amazing view of the Manhattan Bridge, especially at sunset. Okay, so I just drew a couple of trees there on the left side of the, uh, the bridge view and having fun adding these people walking about. There's actually a large, you know, several large packs of people gathering around here waiting for the most amazing view of the uh, sunset illuminating the Manhattan Bridge. And uh, people walking from different angles and uh, at different distances from me drawing loosely of the foliage structure. And then now I'm trying to finish the, um, the overall structure of the bridge. Trying to finish this, uh, the two lakes of this tower area. And then just drawing the lamppost with the, uh, the name of this area, Dumbo, hanging on it. And the car there parked in the distance and then starting to draw the right leg of this bridge tower here. And a lot of parallel lines to add on to. Now I'm starting to add these um, inner supports of the two lakes of the bridge. Here I am really focusing in very intently to the details in front of me. I don't have a lot of time because the daylight is fading away very fast. Uh, shading in between these little brackets of crossing bars and some more crossing bars around this area. It's, a, it's actually a very intensely shaded area and it's kind of hard to see. So I'm just guessing the structure of these uh, supporting metallic bars. Yeah, so many of these bars are going inwards because uh, we're looking at the bottom of this bridge from an angle and just shading in in between the bars with solid brown ink to really accentuate the intensely shaded area as well as the, uh, this is probably the railing area. And then moving on to drawing the higher part of the railings. Right over here. Yeah, this, one, this part I can see more clearly. After that, I'm, I'm starting to draw the higher part of the, the tower. It's slanting downwards towards the right. Again, because of the, uh, the angle I'm looking at this. The thickness of the tower and these four uh, pieces for anchorage of the wires. The negative space in between, uh, the shape of an arch, and then the left and right leg. And don't forget these little smaller shapes. I want to divide these into about uh, five squares of small units. Okay, after dividing these into smaller units, I'm starting to tackle the first one on top. So a lot of crossing shapes about five and then starting to add these crossing bars for the left leg. Uh, this reminds me of the game tic-tac-toe. So that makes the drawing process more fun. 
than just repeating these lines and shapes. Okay, so I think I captured the uh, the spirit of the Manhattan Bridge. Now I'm starting to add these uh, cables connected to the four anchors. Okay, so I've got the four main cables and the anchors and four more for this side, which are extremely foreshortened. That's why these four cables are so close together on the right side. Okay, so adding a bit of accentuation for some parts of the, uh, the tower. Okay, so now I'm very quickly drawing these vertical suspenders, which are uh, numerous. So it's just kind of summarizing uh, the feel of these. Yeah, these are just repeating parallel lines going vertically, adding final bits of details for the bottom part and the uh, simplified versions of uh, buildings in the distance. Uh, as I move on to this part of the sketch, I've gathered a huge crowd behind me taking photos, but I just don't care. I just kept on sketching. So my goal is just to get this drawn and painted, uh, preserved in my sketchbook forever. And um, so I don't care about these people that much. Okay, so now it's time to paint watercolors. So before finishing the details for the two side buildings, I just wanna paint the sunset glow on the Manhattan Bridge and the sky before, it, um, before all the beautiful colors fade away. So I just forgot a little bit of foliage for the negative space over here. All right, so that's it, it's time to paint to capture the beauty of this time of the day. Um, starting with yellow as usual. Again, this is diluted yellow ochre with a tiny bit of lemon yellow. So these um, cables and wires, as well as most part of the uh, Manhattan Bridge Tower is illuminated by the golden sunshine, which looks heavenly. So I'm also mixing a little bit of uh, orange into the yellow ochre and just keep this color pretty diluted. Yeah, so as I always mention, uh, when we're starting a watercolor painting, it's just um, easier and keep the yellows clean by starting painting those areas that are yellow or orange first. Okay, just keep wetting the rest of the areas with uh, yellow and yellow orange, the evening atmosphere. And then I'm just wetting the sky area behind with clear water. So it's easier for the colors of blues and turquoise to spread out without having hard edges or brush marks. Um, yeah, so starting with, uh, this is actually a mix of green into uh, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. The color of the evening sky is just a really charming uh, turquoise blue or sometimes even turquoise green. And we can always spice up the saturation. So starting from the middle to the very bottom of the sky, the, uh, the color, actually the value of the sky is actually fading off a little bit into a lighter value. So in watercolors, we simply squeeze water into that same color to have uh, a diluted version. And then, yeah, adding some retouches in between the little shapes of the, uh, the bridge's negative spaces. That's pretty much it for the sky. Now I'm adding some warm yellow green for the first layer of the foliage surrounding the bridge. So I've been doing urban sketching for over 10 years now, but because I'm an introvert, every time I'm doing it, honestly, I always feel it's a little bit daunting um, because of the eyes of strangers, you know, questions and comments lingering. But most of the time people are very, very friendly. Um, as an introvert, it always feels a little bit uncomfortable, to be honest. Yet, my passion for capturing the breathtaking view overpowered my self-consciousness. So I just pressed on, realizing that the beauty I was creating on paper mattered more than the, the opinions of those around me. In that moment, my art took its dominance and the world faded into the background. All right, so now I am wet onto wet, adding a bit of shade color for the foliage by using uh, Viridian Green with a tiny bit of burnt sienna mix in, just for the bottom part of the foliage. And now I just mix green, like Viridian Green with um, Cerulean Blue to get this uh, turquoise color. It contains less water compared to the sky because the, uh, the metallic structure is much more intense and solid compared to the sky. Just adding it 
very loosely, leaving some golden orange colors、uh, untouched for the amazing shine, and a little bit of、um, bluish value for for certain areas. That is against the、uh, the sunshine. Yeah, and same for the、uh, railings on the bottom half of the bridge tower. So the bottom half of the、uh, the bridge tower, it contains a higher ratio of、uh, cobalt blue or ultramarine blue, because、um, it's really away from the sunshine under the canopy of the deck. All right, so now I am putting on some retouches of、uh, yellow ochre and orange, a bit more intense compared to before because the glow now is really intense. It's so vibrant right now. I think it's only gonna stay for just a couple of minutes. Yeah, so these cables and wires right now they look like the golden strings of a harp, playing a beautiful melody in the、uh, evening sunshine. Now I'm adding some more intense turquoise containing less water for the higher part of the tower, skipping around a little bit because because of the、uh, the subtle lighting condition happening right now, and the color of the bridge is very very unstable right now. I think it's changing every minute.、Uh, the sun is going lower and lower, and the contrast is higher. Yeah, again the bottom half it looks really intense bluish. And now I'm adding a stronger yellow orange glow for the deck area of the bridge, as well as the、uh, buildings in the distance. The bottom of these buildings is in like a, a grayish shade color. And don't forget to paint these small、uh, crossing bars. And adding another layer of choppy brushstrokes of shade of green, which is mixed with viridian and a little bit of burnt sienna for the foliage. A bit more balance of yellow orange and turquoise for the tower of the bridge.、Uh, the lighting condition is changing pretty much like every minute, so I had to kind of adjust my colors、uh, a little bit. Okay, so now the dramatic lighting condition is gone now, and before it's completely dark, I am going back to the drawing process of these、uh, buildings windows,、uh, just simplifying these、uh, windows into. Uh, rectangles. The ones closer to me on the closer on the left, they look a little bit wider compared to the ones closer to the bridge, because of perspective. Adding a couple more people walking towards the view. And、um, I didn't draw every single window of the brick building on the left side, just to leave some white space for a sense of flexibility and、um, you know less is more. The rest of the windows are just for the viewers to imagine. And these rows of windows, they're extremely foreshortened here,、um, and these staircases are a little tricky to draw, but it's just kind of following the the,、uh, the pattern that I see and feel here. Yeah, level after level, and、um, some more foreshortened windows. Adding a few more people.、Um, it's pretty busy right now in the evening because everyone is coming here. To look at the dramatic colors of the sunshine landing on the bridge, and now I want to add more urban details on the left side below the building. There's a really nice, interesting arrow that says one-way traffic, and a stop sign there, an umbrella from a vendor, and、um, a guy leading the way for a lady over here. There are a lot of young people hanging around here. There's、um, a food truck. And、uh, a few more people drawing very spontaneously, taking only about fifteen seconds to draw each figure,、um, and then writing down the title. Yeah, so a lot of urban sketchers have sketched this view of the Manhattan Bridge in between the buildings at Dumbo. So yeah, I'm really excited that I got this done on my list. Okay, so now just painting the brick buildings with a terracotta color, which is mix of red and burnt sienna. And for the right side as well, I need some warm colors to balance with the、uh, the cooler colors of the sky and the bridge, and to echo with the golden glow on the bridge cables and wires. Again, this is a really playful mix of orange and burnt sienna 
playing with water control as well. There's a little bit of blooming happening. So the coloring of these buildings are not too flat and static. Um, using leftover blue for the reflection of the sky onto these gl glassy window panels as well as orange. So I love painting in uh, window panels. They are just like mirrors reflecting the environment. So after the warm colors of these brick buildings, now I'm adding a little bit of contrast um, for these windows here on the right hand side using bluish tones. And the last step of this painting process is to uh, color in the outfits of these people, starting with the uh, umbrella there, the food truck. I had to paint from memory, uh, skin colors, mix of orange and red diluted with a lot of water. I think most of these, these people around, they were actually wearing black. People in the modern world, they tend to wear black or very deep blue, dark green outfits. Okay, so just having fun, uh, mixing a bunch of different colors together for these people's outfits. And then shade the bottom of the deck with a really intense blue purple. And that's it. Here's the look of my finished sketch. It's uh, very much all dark right now and uh, I'm gonna call it done. And passing by this dome area on the way back to the uh, subway station, there's a music performance happening. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. Stay tuned for more fun adventures around New York. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye.